What's up everybody, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Car Rant. Today, it's all about this silver car. We are finally fixing some issues that we've got with it, such as like front end stuff and little other things like that, getting a new timing belt. We're just doing a lot of surgery and we want to take you with us to show you the difference between old and busted and the new hotness. We're here at Curry's Auto right now, now known as Mr. Tire, because Mr. Tire bought Curry's Auto. Will just rolled up. He's going to be helping us with all of these upgrades that we're going to be doing. And just to show you guys a little bit of what we're doing, let me, uh, let me open the car here. So, mission critical today, honestly, is this. This is most of the parts for the front end. I didn't get link ends because the ones that are on here are probably still good. So, But new tire rods, new arms, all the joints and parts for those in those little bags there. So we should be good. What's up, bro? What up? Yeah. Ready to get dirty on this thing? Yes. All right. Then we got brakes back there. I know you should see our reflection. Uh. <laughs> so first things first, I messed up because I bought a timing belt kit. As you can see here. Oh, there we go. And uh, which is something that probably needs to be changed on this car. But I also need to change the serpentine belt, and that was the belt that I was actually intending to change. So we have to go make a quick trip to. Uh, AutoZone to go try and get a new serpentine belt. That was my bad. I mean, this probably does need to be changed too because I don't think the belts have been touched since the car was purchased. So it's it's that time to get that stuff done, honestly. Last but most certainly not least, we have new brakes. Green stuff. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be hype. How's it looking in there? Good, we got a bay. Yes. We will be uh, good to go. Able to do things. So let's go get the correct belt since I screwed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's get this punk started. It's gonna take a while. Well, you know, it's it's gonna be a little bit easier. Knowing that it's just a serpentine that we're trying to replace. Yeah. So yeah, let's do this. Cracking down in there. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Hold on, let's see if we can get a good view of that. It's not like super. It's hard to see on camera, but that thing is riddled with little tiny micro fractures and cracks. Yeah. That. There's not chunks really missing out of it, but it's still. Yeah, yeah it's bad. <laughs> So this is my big issue with certain uh, Japanese cars and just tiny four cylinders like this. Your alternator up in here, if you can aim up in there at the very top, you'll see a manual tensioner. Yeah. And then over there, this pulley right up in here, my finger is pointing to, if you guys can see that. Okay. Yeah, if you guys can see that, this is a manual, this is a spring tensioner. So OG stuff and new stuff in the same place. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like I could just make it all happen at one time. Plus two separate belts, which I don't understand why yeah. they did that. <laughs> well, hello friends. Today we're baking an, a Mitsubishi Lancer cake. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Step one of, this, of the instructions is, pull this belt off. There's a tensioner up here. You That's undo this bolt. See. Yeah, you undo this bolt. Then you run this bolt out and it pushes the tensioner that away. There you go. And it makes the belt come off. Then up here, after you take this belt off, you don't want to immediately replace it because you have to pull the belt that's right here off. So we're going to lower the car down, undo the tensioner that's way up in there. That's the alternator, right? Yeah, that's the alternator belt. And uh, make it happen. And then we'll have Mitsubishi Shoop. <laughs> this guy. Yes. He has a halo. Uh, I am. The car angel. The car angel. <laughs> Like a Valkyrie, but a dude and fat. <laughs> Make sure that they're... So, check this out. Old belt. Really tight, crusty, different color, cracked. Nasty looking. Kind of hard to see. There we go. 
New build. Clean, kind of stiff. Got that nice uh, ripping material on the inside. And it looks like it's actually the right size. Well, you know what these are made of, right? Yeah. They're actually made of Kevlar. Oh. Yeah, most most modern belts that go in cars are made out of Kevlar instead of just super hard rubber or fabric. Like what that is. Yeah. So like this material right here is actually the uh, the Kevlar oh, coating. Zoom in. Goes. So. Yeah. So nice. Kevlar and stuff. So we have a bulletproof vest going in each time. Hey. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Be good to go, girl. Yes. So to bring us up to speed, timing belt okay. is not needed to be done. Serpentine belt was desperately needed to be done. You guys saw that, that was 100%. a mess. And we've got the alternator belt on now. Everything's both together, it's working right. We're good. Now it's front assembly. Front assembly. Front assembly, let's go. Taking the rotor off because we're also going to do brakes while we're here, and uh, just to make it lighter and easier, I guess, to just take it off while it's off. Now we got to replace this guy. This is the outer tie rod. Yeah. Our inner tie rod I had bought with it, but apparently it's good. So all we're going to take off is this. Get the new arm on, and go get this thing realigned so that it's not shaking under 60 miles an hour. This poor guy just got <laughs> locked in the face. We set the caliper up there because you know we wanted to take the rotors off so we could do the pads while this is all like this. And you were knocking it, right? Trying to get the ball. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I, I had lifted up on the knuckle so I could reposition the uh, ball joint, and it just came. It is a swing. And I look over and all I see right is in the nose too, there. man. Oh no! And then I look at his face. Look at that. Boom! Straight to the nose. Man. <laughs> it didn't really hurt, it just surprised me. It's more of a, oh, frick, I just got attacked by a car. The tie rod in should look like. And that's what we just pull out of the car. Yep. Old and busted, new hotness. Old and busted, new hotness. So we've got our new caliper on there. Yeah, we're running the blanks. These are stage one slash 11. So clearly when people get to higher horsepower numbers, this is what they go to. We got the green stuff mounted in. He taught me a couple of new little tricks and methods. Yes, sir. So yeah, it's looking good. Feels good. And then all these new shiny pieces in here. It's kind of hard to see on camera because of the bright background, but this is looking way better. This bar is lighter than the OEM one. So like we're we're in good hands right now. This it also doesn't easy. have a it also doesn't have a blown grease spewing ball joint. Oh yeah, did you see this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the violence. That's atrocious. Oh god. Oh man, hold on. Good God, that's horrible. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that's getting out of my car now. That's terrible. Goodbye. <laughs> We have got all the alignment stuff put in. We just gotta get it all kind of finagled and figured out. And now we're getting started on the rear anti-sway bar. This should be good. It's a much bigger bar. I'm, I'm hoping that this really makes a huge difference, especially when it's time to go drive on some dirty gravel roads. So, yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. So, basically you undo the bolts on the end legs, and those two bolts on both sides, pull the bar out, and then undo the process you did.
It's about 10 o'clock at night. I hung out with Will afterwards. You know, we went and drove the car around, bed the brakes in, gave that suspension, the front suspension, a workout just to feel it and make sure things were tight and solid. Also, I just want to put this out there. That rear anti sway bar, it's from White Line, and uh, I bought it a long time ago actually. I bought it when I bought the seats. So if you remember when the seats upgrade was done, that's when that White Line bar was bought. Long story short, we never actually installed the bar. Uh, and it's probably with good reason, honestly, because you know, you need certain tools and things that are strong enough to break the bolts that are on your suspension. They are the tightest bolts on your car, aside from like head studs and things like that. So having Will in a shop and the ability to do that was really nice. Uh, but we got a lot done today. Two new serpentine belts are on, one for the alternator and one for the other half of the engine. We've also got uh, topped off the oil and double checks and things, made sure things were good. We've also changed the wheels out, so now we are balanced, there's an alignment done, things are straight. We added that white line bar, and also we've added in our new stage one slash 11 brakes with the EVC green stuff kit. So we're rocking. We're playing with fire now. I just gotta say the white line bar is incredible. It's pushing through turns. It wants you to keep on going. It wants you to press as hard as you can on the gas pedal and pray to God that the tires stick. It's really made a world of difference. It's cornering harder and it feels a lot better. And I think also with the new steering rack and the arms and all of that, it really helps stabilize the car even more so. So we're definitely gonna get new tires and coilover soon and really complement what that rear bar can do. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys, thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know, should we do more tuner stuff with this particular car? What else do you want to see done with this Lancer? Let me know. Put in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching, thanks for being great people, and I know that this video is probably well and long overdue, but thanks for, you, for your patience, and we'll see you on another episode. God bless you guys, and peace! I have a solution to that. There you go. That's how I deal with it. <laughs>